you know, the last time that we filmed together, one of us had to go to the emergency room. <laughs> Hey, I'm Ben. I'm a huge fly fisherman. Today's huge fly fisherman video is about how to fish from a drift boat. Real Western stuff. I remember my first time fishing from a drift boat. It was a big deal. I was a little intimidated though. And maybe you are too, and that's why you're watching this video. Or maybe you're just an awesome person that's subscribed to the channel. Anyway, today's video is about how to fish from a drift boat. Will any of this relate to rafts? And yes, there is a lot of stuff that will relate to rafts too. Today we're on the San Juan River, and I have with me fly fishing guide James Garretson of About Trout. Find me on Yelp, five stars. James is a full-time fly fishing guide in New Mexico. And a part-time musician, actor, and rapper. Hi, I'm James. James, Brad Pitt's stunt double and a river runs through it. You can find him at abouttrout.com. He's also got a YouTube channel. I'll leave all that information down below. Thanks, Ben. You're welcome. This video isn't gonna be about fishing techniques. Got you with the clickbait. Finger guns? <laughs> it's about general principles of being in a boat and fly fishing around other people and how to make that go smoothly. If you wanna hear us talk about angles and mending, that's in a different video that we haven't made yet because this video is more important. Let's talk about what you should bring with you in a boat. Bring your necessities, but try to limit it. Bring your rain jacket in case the weather turns. Bring some flies and stuff. Make sure to bring some water to stay hydrated. And bring some koozies so your beer doesn't get warm. Maybe a dry bag to keep your stuff dry. Oh, is that what dry bags do? I think so. I read the label. <laughs> Just be aware that there is limited space in the boat and even more limited dry storage. The less you bring, the better. Unless it's beer. What should you not bring? Good question. Try not to bring 50 pounds of ice in the bottom of your boat. We learned that lesson today. Don't wear studs in the boat. What was that? Studs in the boat? Don't wear them. Ah. Uh, looking at you, Farino. Don't bring dirt and mud into the boat with you. Rinse your feet off. Just like your grandma's house, wipe your feet. Lo siento, abuela, no me pegues. Don't bring glass bottles in the boat or anywhere near a river. That should be common knowledge, but unfortunately it's not. The funny thing with common knowledge is that common knowledge isn't so common. <laughs> <laughs> Asterix, bottles of whiskey, Bailey's Irish cream, things of that sort, those can be tolerated. But please, don't bring a case of long necks in the boat. You're not getting fratty with the bros at the Sigma Chi house. Cans. While we're talking about drinks and stuff, let's talk about food. Sustenance. I'm talking about fried chicken. <laughs> Lots of it, all the time. Personally, I'm fine with throwing your chicken bones into the river to give that ecosystem a nice greasy boost. Leave No Trace probably would not agree with that. Just make sure the dogs aren't watching when you chuck that carcass. Let's talk about the layout of the boat, the geography of the vessel. I got a D in that, which is why I'm a fishing guide. Mr. Smith, remember when you told me I'd go nowhere in life? Well, <laughs> guess what? You were right. I'm a fly fishing guide. <laughs> Typically, you've got a rower in the middle, maybe a hired guide, and then an angler in the front and back. The bow and stern if you want to get all nautical. Drift boats usually don't hold more than three people and a dog. A real dog. We're not talking about Bijans. So can you and your buddy and your girlfriends and your dogs all go fly fishing in the same boat? No, probably not. <laughs> Never cast over the middle of the boat. You're gonna hook the rower or get tangled up with the other angler. That's what they call in the business, the worst case scenario. Once you pass the rower's informal test of not messing anything up for a while, they may tell you it's okay to cast over the middle of the boat, but be careful. There's a certain amount of trust here and you don't wanna give somebody some unwanted jewelry. Except maybe the fish. <laughs> I only let my good friends cast over the middle of the boat. One way you can work around having to cast over the middle of the boat is to learn to fish your back cast. It sounds scary, but I believe in you. If you're right-handed and you're fishing in the bow of the boat, or the front, it's always gonna be easier fishing to your left, river left. But if there's a super sick hole over on the right side, you can still get it without casting over the middle of the boat. Learn to fish your back cast and get good at it. Same goes for the back of the boat too. With two anglers in the boat, you're gonna have to work together to avoid problems like getting tangled up. Be a team. One thing you can do is pretend there are imaginary lines going out from the rower's seat, kinda like the oars. The water in front of the oars is for the guy in the bow. The water behind the oars is for the guy or gal in the stern. One advantage to fishing in the back of the boat is you can fish behind the boat. If you're in the front of the boat or the bow and you're fishing behind the oar locks, you're poaching the other person's water. And that's just not cool. Say no to poaching. Of course, the guy in the bow should always be fishing ahead of the boat anyway. Future water. It is permissible 
to break this rule if both anglers are fishing different sides of the river. Or if the boat is stationary and you're windshield wiping. Ooh, is that an industry term? This brings us to our next point, communication. You have to talk to each other. If you're on a guided trip, the guide will be barking out orders. Listen to them. If you're with friends, the rower has the ultimate say in what's happening, but it helps for everyone to talk to each other. Like, hey James, I'm gonna take the right side up here. Why don't you take the left side? There's a good spot there. Excellent. I'm so happy we could synergize. This avoids competition, confusion, and tangles. Even if you're not communicating, you should be aware of what the other angler is doing. The person in the back should be watching the person in the front, but not in like a creepy way. If you're both fishing the same side of the river, pay attention to where the angler in front is putting their flies and put yours somewhere else. Get a fresh spot. Don't cast to the same spot as them. Cast to a new spot that hasn't seen their fly. A couple quick things. I wanna encourage you to wear your PFD as often as possible, even where it's not required. They save lives. You know what I hear all the time? Oh, I'll just keep it right here, and if something happens, I'll put it on. That's not how it works, man. When something goes wrong, you will not have time to put on your PFD. Trouble happens too quickly. Let me ask you something. Do you like being alive? Do you like watching huge fly fishing videos? Then wear your PFD on the water. That's that common sense we were talking about, right? Modern PFDs are pretty comfy and have lots of cool pockets. Just wear your PFD. It's better than being dead. It's also important to respect wading anglers. And if it's your first time rowing a boat, try not to plow through them like a demolition derby. I've been in that boat before. <laughs> I wasn't rowing. You're in a boat. You have access to a lot more water than they do. Give them some room. If you're floating by them, fish the other side of the river. You could also offer them a beer as you go by. If it's a small river, and you can't really get out of their way, stop casting as you go by and try to disturb their water as little as possible. Is that that common sense stuff, Ben? That's the common sense we were talking about. If you're fishing with some friends, you have a few responsibilities to the boat owner. If you're fishing in a buddy's boat, they always are gonna appreciate gas, paying for the shuttle, I think we talked about fried chicken, bring the beer or other party favors, it's your job. Boat owners like that, and that's what gets you invited back next time. Also, if you're the angler, it's good to put some fish in the boat. It's not mandatory, but everyone likes it. All right, I think that is it for today. That's how to fly fish from a drift boat. Maybe next time we'll make a video about actual fishing techniques. That might help. We'll see. Thank you as always for watching another one of my videos. I'll see you next Monday. Remember to comment, like, and subscribe. Check out hugeflyfisherman.com, abouttrout.com. And as always, stay, stay huge. huge. What do you do? I'm a professional integrity faker. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs>